I feel I know nothing about you, Zoe. We haven't really had a chance to talk, bird to... bird. <laughs> Smooth. Like, uh, what sort of labor do you do back home? Mostly homemaking, or, uh... That's very sexist, Crow. I know. The girls always tell me I'm sexy. It makes me blush, but you can't see it on account of the feathers. Not sexy, sexist. Exactly. Oh, I give up. But anyway, no, I don't do the homemaking. I'm learning about neural programming. It's a way to tell machines how to think and operate. I'll be a programmer when... Well, when all of this is over. The world's saved, etc. I've kind of put the whole career thing on hold. Women always do that. It's because they need to take care of the nest. <sighs> The Asadi remind me of the Eye. Fascist soldiers are the same everywhere, even across parallel dimensions. What's going on here? Isn't that... Are they trying to chop down Abnaxus's abode? Great. That's great. So this is it. A boat of, uh, big ugly thing what speaks funny? Apparently so. And there's someone else here. Apparently so. Huh. Once this unholy tree's been knocked down, the electric will take me seriously. They'll see I have the power to get things done. Maybe then I can stop licking the asses of the Azadi. Goddess this and goddess that. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, sucking up to their feminine... Ah! A member of the voting public. Uh, I honour Hilaris Esquire at your service, madam. But uh, I'm sure I don't need to introduce myself to you, hmm? You've seen my face in print and in public appearances. You know me as an honourable and truthful fellow who stands with the common man. And woman. Uh, we shan't forget the common woman. Yes, yes. I'm, of course, running for Commissioner of City Watch, a position sorely and desperately in need of new blood. The Watch needs strength. It needs direction. It needs humanity. In other words, it needs me. He's gunning for a political position with the City Watch. I wonder what his end game is. You're running for City Watch? Indeed, the Watch is in dire need of strong, Male leadership in this time of dark crisis. Male? As you well know, the current commissioner, a person of the female persuasion, has failed to maintain order in the city in these dark, trying times. She's been soft on sorcery, magnanimous with magicals. She's indulged the occult, and she's extended an open hand to non-humans, acting in discord with our foreign benefactors. Oh, it's understandable. She's weak. She's sentimental. She's merely a woman, and she's not been able to properly inspire the men of the Watch to take appropriate action against our occult immigrants. As soon as I'm elected, this will change. We will honor Azadi law and make Mercuria pure again. No more magic. No more magicals. And our women folk can once again return to home and hearth to be pampered and protected by their husbands, fathers and brothers. As it should be. Yes, yes. It looks like they're trying to destroy Abnaxus's abode. Why are you trying to knock down this tree? Well, it's not just a tree. It's an affront to common decency and humanity. This so-called domicile was the dark and dangerous den of one of the most militant of magicals. An abominable beast that threatened our young, 
and are women by its mere existence. Eradicating this occult stone tree from our historic green is not just my election promise to voters, but my God's given responsibility as a human being. Let's see if I can get him talking about himself. He sounded more than happy to do so. It's Hilaris, right? Oh no, Hilaris Esquire, licensed solicitor, and your candidate for Commissioner of City Watch. It's an unusual name. It's unique, certainly, but it's a Northlander name with deep roots in Mercurian society. My father, the esteemed Hubert Hilaris Esquire, served dutifully for many years on the council. He was respected, feared, and admired by all. Of course, though, that was before he was beguiled by that Galmari witch. She used her wily sorcery and beastly sensuality to lure my father away from his family. Away from... from us. I've sworn to restore our sacred heritage. The witches shall burn, humanity shall prevail, and the name Hilaris shall no longer be the butt of spiteful jests. He appears to be an Azadi supporter. I take it you're happy with the Azadi occupation? No, 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 I wouldn't call it an occupation, not anymore. The Azadi came to save us from the Tyrant invaders and they stayed to protect us against all magicals. They're our benefactors, not our oppressors. But the Resistance has put us all at risk. Unless we re-establish human dominion over the Northlands, we'll be vulnerable when the Azadi eventually return to Azadir. For believe me, they will. Oh, they've promised as much. This is not their land, and this is why I run for office. To build a Mercuria by and for humans, one that can stand the test of time and stand up against occult invaders. We must invest in the future, and you can't spell future without owner Hilaris. Oh, I've had enough. Well, best of luck with everything. Luck is the lazy man's excuse for failure. Luck is an occult idea. I create my own destiny, young madam, and so should you. Here's my advice to you. Find yourself a decent human husband and start breeding decent human babies. This is how you can best contribute to our common manifest destiny. And remember, a vote for honor is a vote for humanity. Go on, put your back into it, man. This is pathetic. It's merely a tree. So what now? I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? We kill them, bury their bodies, and then go about our lives as if nothing happened. That's disturbing. I know. I'm dark. I'm really not in the mood for killing today. Or any day. Fine, then you come up with something. Crow, could you fly over there for me? Why? Just trust me. Why? Jesus, please, Crow. Fine. Pardon me for wanting to play a role in my own destiny. I'll do it. What's your animal? Filthy magic! What kind of shoddy job are the Azadi doing when there are still talking birds flapping about? They should provide us if with it a wasn't few for honest goons, sticks, I would thump so that reactionary misogynist on the head. No court would convict me. It would be plague. justified homicide. Skin that God's damn talking bird! Magical aberration! Forget my hands on the filthy feathered thing. I'll twist it, scranny little. <laughs> ah, language, language. What can I do for you, young madam? Let's play this nice and cool, Zoe. About that talking bird that's bothering you. Yes? What about it? I just saw it. Where? Where? Go look for that goddamn bird over there.
Again? Seriously? Ugh. Fine. Soft-headed fool. <sighs> we'll need to carry him home to have someone look at his head. The tree can wait until tomorrow. You do the carrying. I'd do it myself, but someone needs to lead the way and keep an eye out for uh, potholes. That was brilliant! First, I did my thing, and then that goofball tried to hit me with a rock, and then stuff happened, and Dung for Brains got knocked out, and then they all left! End scene. <laughs> It was almost like one of those puppet shows that Wizard puts on in the square. It was hilarious! I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's the most fun I've had since... since... I don't know, I guess since I hung out with April all those years ago. Locked, but I have the key. This place looks a lot bigger on the inside. It is a lot bigger on the inside. Okay, this is freaky. I feel dizzy. There must be magic here because this makes no sense. Things can't be bigger on the inside than on the outside. Then again, why should I be surprised? I've seen weirder things. Weird is my new normal. Right, so, clues. That's interesting. Someone's here. I can't... Someone's here. And I'm... Who's... Oh, God. I must apologize, ma'am. I didn't mean to frighten you. Zoe Castillo. You're the last person I expected to find here. I remember him from my last visit to Mercuria. I have no... He's right. I have... I'm sorry. Who are you? You don't remember me. Granted, it's been a while, but I would have thought that... Oh, please, don't take it personally. I had some... medical issues. I forgot everything that happened here. There are still huge gaps. I've tried oh. my best to remember, but... yeah, massive gaps. Understandable. Well, we helped each other out the last time you were here. We even shared an airship ride to the Dark People's Library. That's where you vanished on us, into thin air. To be honest, I've been wondering where you went off to. I just never expected to find you here, of all places. How in the name of the balance did you get inside? People have been trying for years, but this house has strong wards. Venar magic, the oldest there is. And now I understand why. It's a treasure trove. Wait, is that the Annals of Dreaming? Good God, that's a lost treasure. Only five were ever made. Why be secretive about it? I'm, I'm not sure I want to tell this man absolutely everything yet. I know my way around wards. So I see. Your talents run deeper than I remember, Miss Castillo. I'm impressed. Pardon my curiosity, but what are you looking for here? Abnaxus himself vanished a decade ago. I should trust Brian. There's no point in It's not that I don't trust him, but... I was just curious about what was in here. You know what they say about curiosity, Miss Castillo. It killed the cat? What? No. Uh, curiosity is the doorway to knowledge and wisdom. Looks like I picked the perfect day for a stroll in the green. I was wondering why that odorous Hillerous fellow wasn't still trying to chop this tree down. Now I know. Let's see if we find anything interesting, shall we? Those are some portentous looking books. I wish Abnaxus must have been a big believer in crystals. Or maybe this is how people light their houses. Maybe this is totally normal for Arcadia. Interesting.
Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Papa Bear, before mauling Goldilocks and devouring her whole. Don't ever mess with fairy tale creatures. This is fascinating. Amnaxus was a very well read man thing. All those years, and it was right here under my nose. There are enough musty old books here to fill a university library's special collection of musty old books. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Amnaxus must have made the bed before leaving for good. Hmm. That's kind of sad and eerie. Have you found anything of interest? Keep looking. This place is a treasure trove. This looks interesting. The first dreamer references in the annals of dreaming. Uh, that's this book right here. And the chapter about the first dream. It's certainly a starting point. Let's see what it says. Can you read that book? I've lived in Arcadia for decades, and there hasn't been much to do aside from studying ancient texts, so yes, I can read this book. Let's see, the chapter in question speaks of the Ular. They are said to be wardens of the Dreaming One, whatever that means. It's a rough translation, the English language isn't quite up to the task. The Ular and the Yete, one people that split into two, that sounds familiar. It says here the Yete left the Purple Mountains to go south to burrow into the ground something about a well of dreams. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true and how much is fantasy or prophecy. It's a, a difficult book to decipher. There's... Also, something about two dreamers becoming one? It's vague. This is almost certainly a prophecy of some sort. The Ular live on Cloud Peak. It's in the mountains of Yedra. Where's that on the map? Ah, there it is. Straight north across the plains, right in the middle of the border mountains. This is an old book, so... I don't know if they still live there. I've never heard of the Ular. They might all be dead. That note fell out of the annals when Westhouse turned the pages. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. Here's another note. On the matter of the kin and the approaching war of the balance... <laughs> By Jove, this is the information we've been looking for. I can't believe it was right here all this time. Your help has been invaluable, Zoe. I'm in your debt. This note fell out from the pages of the annals. What's a soulless stone? I'm not sure. The Soul Stone was taken from Luke's by the Warlock Clax. It must be retrieved, or the past, present, and future will cease to be. That sounds ominous. It does indeed. I don't know about any Soul Stone, but I'm guessing this Clax fellow does. I wonder if Abnaxus means Old Roper Clax. April told me his story. He was a two-bit wizard who resided in a floating castle up north near the border mountains. April said she taught him a lesson. She didn't get into any details, but he lost his castle. 
Last I heard, he's doing children's theater here in town. Reformed, apparently, if that's a thing a wizard is capable of. Sounds like this soul stone is important. I'm sure Obnoxus won't mind me borrowing this. I'll return it to him in person, if I make it to Cloud Peak. The War of the Balance. I should get going. Should we...? Would you mind terribly if I stayed here to read these books? Well, this is... it's private property, isn't it? Obnoxus isn't coming back, and I've been itching for a chance to peruse his library for years now. I promise I won't remove anything or make a mess. It doesn't look like Brian's gonna do any damage to the place. He's respectful and he might have the best of intentions, but I made a promise to blind Bob. I'd feel awful if anything happened to Obnaxus's abode. It doesn't look like Brian's gonna do any damage. I guess... Okay. I mean... It's not my house. Excellent. Thank you so much, Miss Castillo. I hope our paths cross again very soon. Didn't you say something about a wizard and a puppet show? Nope. No, you did. You said something about a show in the square. I did not. Crow. Oh, right, right! Roper Clax's Fingerlings! Man, that show's great. A modern classic. Clax. He's the wizard April Ryan fought. That's right. He was behaving badly, so she fought him and trapped him inside some sort of calculating machine. Pretty clever stuff. Where can I find this puppet show? I'll show you. I feel better having Crow around, even though I'm not sure what he can do. Still, I wish I had wings. I could just fly to the Purple Mountains, after I get some proper directions. Talking bird is one of the least strange things about this place. If you'll seek an autograph, you must purchase my book first. It's on sale today, only... No, sorry. I, I need to talk to you. Talk, hmm? Well, I only have a few minutes before my show begins, but I'm sure I can spare a couple of them for a pretty young thing like you. This has to be the right man. You are Roper Clax, right? The wizard? Who told you that? Well, that sign, for one. No, the, the wizard part. Who told you? I mean, uh, I'm merely a humble finger puppeteer trying to make an honest living in a cold and heartless world. <laughs> but you were a wizard once. Fully rehabilitated, I don't go anywhere near sorcery, not anymore. You should really read my highly acclaimed and best-selling memoir, A Farewell to My Wizarding Ways. It's a thrilling story of redemption and romance, of dashing heroes and wicked villainesses, of flying castles and curious calculating devices. Every word of it as true as the night is dark and the day is bright, of course. <laughs> Didn't he and April have some sort of confrontation? Do you remember April Ryan? April Ryan? Oh, yes, of course, absolutely, certainly. Naturally, the bit <clears throat> The brave young woman who came to my castle and stole it and helped me put my sorceress past behind me. How could I possibly forget? He's obviously got some issues with April. So, about April. 
Why, why does everyone want to talk about April Ryan? She was just a weak little human who stumbled onto things she didn't... <clears throat> <laughs> no, 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 I must uh, apologize. You see, April and I had some disagreements in the past. I'm past that now. I'm a different person. <laughs> As for April Ryan, yeah, yeah, she suffered an ignoble death at the hands of our Azadi benefactors. What a shame. What a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> it's an odd name for a children's puppet show. The Fingerlings. Ah, my beloved finger puppets, beloved by all children and critics alike. Gilbert Grutton of the Daily Mercurian called my show simply astonishing and wrote that it was quite impossible to look away. I couldn't believe my eyes and like a slow motion cart wreck. You see, the fingerlings represent a revolution in finger puppeteering, or as I call it, fingering, uh, trademark and patent pending. The women in particular are quite ecstatic about it. Stay for the show. I guarantee a good time. I might as well get right to it, seeing as his show is about to begin. Do you recall owning a soul stone? A soul stone? I... I don't know what you're talking about. I was just wondering, since there are so many impressive tales about your powers where I come from. And where would that be? Um... That was a long time ago. In another life, I've moved on. I'm a different person now in every way. I was just wondering what happened to the stone. She took it, that bitch. Balance, pardon me? I don't know where that came from. Who? The Yaga. The Wicked Witch of the North, as these simpletons call her. As if they have any idea who and what she truly is. She lurks in Riverwood in the dark places. She feeds on that stone like a... <coughs> like I said, that's in the past, and I've left it all behind long ago. Now, I make an honest living bringing joy to children through my most excellent and revolutionary finger puppet theater. And on that note, I must beg your pardon, young miss. The show is about to begin. Can we please talk again afterwards? I have some more questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. After the show. After the show. Yes, 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 yes. Toodaloo! Yes, here we go. This is gonna be so good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and... Well, humans. And you, Azadi soldier standing over there, you're welcome to watch. Just don't rattle your sabers or rustle your suits. Uh, welcome to this morning's performance of... The Fingerlings. Uh, I am your host and puppeteer, Roper Klax, esteemed thespian and raconteur, author and entrepreneur. My book is available for purchase with a free, personalized dedication. Speak to me after the show. A donation is both appreciated and expected. Drop your coins into the box after the show. Remember that every iron piece goes towards a good purpose. Woohoo! Go fingerlings! My beloved fingerlings, handcrafted reproductions of renowned actors from across Arcadia, immortalized in finger puppet form by skilled artisans. Using only the finest fabrics and natural materials, these lovely creatures are as dear to me as children and as talented and protean as the finest human players. You're all welcome to approach the stage, after the show, of course, to admire my finely crafted miniatures up close and intimately. No food, no touching, no children. And now, beloved audience, 
Prepare yourselves for a journey into mystery for a true story of wizardry and magic. I present to you the tale of the good-hearted wizard and the villainous winch. Once upon a time in the distant north, there lived a kindly old wizard in a wonderful flying castle. This very friendly wizard liked to tease and toy with the people of the land, and sometimes he would do silly things like uh, turn them into stone or furry animals and bottle up the wind. <laughs> Naturally, he meant no harm, and the people of the land love the wizard like they would a grandfather, a very young and very, very handsome grandfather. But one day, an evil sorceress from a distant land came to visit the kindly wizard. This ugly, selfish witch didn't understand that the wizard was only trying to make people happy. She used her dark sorcery to steal all of his possessions and trap him inside a tiny little box where the gentle wizard was barely able to breathe. The poor old man was trapped for many moons inside this box before a benevolent wandering god arrived to free him from his prison. The wizard pledged eternal allegiance to the wandering god in return for vengeance against the cruel witch who trapped him. Together they... There he is, Commander. The dangerous loon who's corrupting our youth with his occult finger rings. What? What's this? What? What are you doing? What's going on? You can't... Hey! Hey, hands off! You're teaching children of magic, old man. You ought to know better. Release me, you dishonorable brute! By the authority vested in me by the Greater Azadi Empire and the Emissary, and in accordance with provisional imperial law prohibiting any and all teachings of occult magic, I'm taking you into custody. You can't do this! You don't know who I am! Tell it to the Magistrate, Wizard. My fingerlings! My precious handcrafted fingerlings! No! I cannot believe that they arrested him. What a travesty! I didn't see that coming. I guess the Azadi aren't fans of creepy puppet shows either. I think it had more to do with him being a wizard. Okay, shit. So what now? He was my only lead to the Soul Stone. All I have to go on is something about a Yaga and Riverwood. Riverwood? I know Riverwood. I've been to Riverwood. If it's Riverwood you need, I know how to get to Riverwood. Really? And the Yaga? The Wicker Witch? I don't know anything about Yagas, but I do know something about witches in Riverwood. On my last trip there, we had a close encounter with one of them. That witch is toast, of course, but I can probably find my way back to Riverwood. It's north. We go north. Wait, which way is up? Yeah, north! Okay. Uh, okay. That's something, right? Much better than nothing. We just need a way to get north that doesn't involve me walking all the way. Or me flying. I'm not flying all that way. I tire easily. Wait. I feel a cunning plan coming on. Follow me, Zoe. Uh-oh. It's either a cunning plan, or I need the toilet. But I'm pretty sure it's a cunning plan. I still can't believe you pulled off the voice and the whole fake hand thing. The hat looked great on you. Uh, totally. Uh, not so sure about the beard, though. My face is itchy. Speaking of faces, I can never show mine in Mercuria again. Not after that last bit we did. If everything goes well, you won't have to. At least we have a ride. Can I trust this thing? They're docile cows, the Elguan. Just leave it to me. 
Mush, Daisy, mush! Whoa, whoa, I think you're upsetting her. Hello. I'll leave the cowgirling to you. I'll fly ahead and scout the terrain instead. Don't lose sight of me!